Did you know that GIMP has an artificial tool built in to help you remove backgrounds in GIMP? Yes, yes it does. And today I'm going to show you how to use this artificial intelligence to remove your backgrounds from your photos in GIMP right here, right now. So if you're ready to elevate your GIMP editing skills, let's do it. And here's the image that we're going to be working with. You can find a link to download this image in the description below. And this is the image with the background removed. Now I did include a new background for the thumbnail that I created for this GIMP tutorial, which is this one right here. And I also created a drop shadow. Now, if you want to learn how to create drop shadows that look realistic, post a comment below. All right. So the first thing we need to do is grab our selection tool and the tool of choice for our artificial intelligence is this one right here. It's called the scissors select tool. Now, once upon a time, this tool was called the intelligent scissors tool. Why they changed it? I have no idea because the scissors select tool or the intelligent selection tool, whichever way you want to call it, is very, very intelligent. I love this tool and I think you will too. It's so much quicker and easier to use versus, let's say, the past tool. And we're going to compare it to the past tool so I can show you how much better this tool is versus that one. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. And what we need to do is we need to start off by adding an anchor point along the edge of our subject in the background. And then GIMP will begin doing its magic to create a path for our selection. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And what I want to do first is I want to grab my pass tool to show you how hard it is to use this tool. Now, it does take practice to learn it, and you may be able to use it faster if you know how to use it. If not, it's difficult to use when you first start using it. So we're going to click here and then I'm going to click all the way over here and well, I can't make a path along that edge because there are so many different turns and direction changes along this edge right here. So I'm going to undo that with Commander Control plus Z. So what I need to do is I need to come over here, click, drag out the handles like so to put that path along there. I need to release my mouse button, grab the handles again, place the handle here inside and then start over here with the new path and put that handle back, click, drag over here. So a lot of different steps to take. Now let's compare that to the scissors select tool. I'm going to grab that with the letter I. I'm going to click right here to start my selection and check this out. I'm going to come all the way over here and I'm going to click right here. This is awesome. I can't wait to show you. Watch this. Boom. Oh my God. Look at that. We have a path exactly where we want it and it only took two clicks compared to the five or six clicks that we had to use with the pass tool or at least add five different anchors. So now I can continue adding new anchor points and new paths along the edge here. Now before you go, I have five pro tips on getting the most out of this tool. So I'm going to share those pro tips as I go along the edge here and continue adding anchor points and those paths. Now, one of my first tips I want to share with you is I will increase the number of anchor points or place more anchor points closer together like I did here when the change of direction is short and quick. So here we have a point that goes up and then to the right, down and then back up to the right and then back up. So each direction in that area, I'm going to continue adding more anchor points to get the selection or the path exactly where I want it. So I'm going to continue going around this image here and making a selection and I'm going to share some more pro tips as we go around. Now to navigate to another point of your image here, hold down your space bar and then you can move it around as needed. Now I'm not going to be able to get all these stray hairs in here. That's fine. I do have another tutorial that will show you how to retain fine hair detail. 
So you can find that link in the description below. So I'm going to go ahead and come all the way down here to the shoulder and then I can come down here and select a larger portion because there's not a lot of change, but check this out. What I need to do next is I need to click here because we have a change in direction, right? But maybe I'm feeling a little lazy. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. Well, I end up getting the path inside of our subject here and I need to add that anchor point over here. Well, instead of starting over and removing this path or this anchor point, I can do that with Command or Control plus Z by undoing it. Instead, do this. You're going to come over here to your path. You're going to click on it with your mouse button. You're going to hold that mouse button and you can see it's now yellow instead of white. Now, check this out. This is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and drag my mouse over to the right and look at that. It's like a magnet being attached to that edge. And once I release, it adds that anchor point right there. How cool is that? I love it. So I'm going to continue going around here. I have some more tips for sharing how to use this tool and they will be coming up shortly. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on making this perfect because you do know the tips to make it perfect, which is coming in here and moving that anchor point as needed. And instead of spending a lot of time on this, we're going to go ahead and continue on to some of the other tips, which are coming up real soon. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click all the way down here and look at that. All of that has been taken care of in one click. We cannot do that with the past tool. So I'm going to click on the outside here so I can get to this side and I'm going to click right here. So here's another pro tip. Instead of click, 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 you can actually trace the outline or the edge of your subject here, kind of like tracing a picture and that path will automatically adhere to the edge. Now to do that, you need to go into your tool options here and make sure you have interactive boundary turned on. Now watch this. I'm going to hold my mouse button down once I click and I'm going to begin tracing along the edge. And you can see that yellow path right there when I get away from the edge. You don't want to go too far away from the edge, but you don't have to be perfect either because GIMP is going to auto magically find that edge to apply that path to. Now, if you go too far or if there's too many redirections like here, then it's not going to stick to that edge. In that case, you need to come over here and add that anchor point. So again, much easier than using the pass tool itself. So whether you want to trace or click around, that's entirely up to you. Whatever works best for you is what I recommend. So I'm going to continue navigating around here because there is another pro tip I want to share with you. I need to go ahead and pull this one down. Now imagine using the pass tool. If you've ever used the pass tool, you know that all these little buttons on her blouse are a nightmare. It's going to take you forever to go around it, but look how quick and easy it is to use the intelligent selection tool to make this part of the selection. So much easier than the past tool. I love it. All right, so I'm going to continue going around here. And what we need to do is we need to close out the path like we do most other selection tools in order to close it out to get the selection that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a little bit. Again, I'm not going to make this perfect because that's not why we're here. We're just here to learn how to use the tool. And once we get around, I will have another pro tip for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick. So much easier. I love this. All right. So we're back at the beginning now and we need to click on that first anchor point to close it out. So make sure you're right on it. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a little circle right next to those crosshairs there. So on the right side, and if you hover over it, it's going to change. And once you see that icon change, you can then click and you know that it will be closed out because of that icon change. Now we have a huge problem right now, but it's not visible yet. And that's because we need to hit enter or return to activate the selection. And once I do, you're going to see a huge problem that we have. And that's going to be part of the pro tip on how to avoid this situation. So I'm going to hit enter or return. And look at that. The selection is horrible. It's not along the edge like I had planned 
when I was creating all those different anchor points. So why is that? Well, if you look at your tool options right here, or at least mine, we can see I have feather edges turned on and the radius is all the way up to 95. That's way too much. So the feathering affects the selection and it doesn't adhere to the edge precisely with feathering turned on. But we do want a little feathering so it's not a hard edge. So what I recommend doing, this is the pro tip, is dropping your radius down to around five or smaller. I'm gonna go right around four and a half. And then what I recommend doing is sampling a small area to test out. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this part right over here. I may wanna come over here on this side as well. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning here and close it out, enter or return, and boom. We now have that selection exactly where we want it along the edge of our subject. So yes, this is an extra step that you have to take because not all backgrounds are going to be the same in every image and you're going to need to change the amount of feathering based on the image that you're working on. And this is a great way to determine which feathering to use because if you use the wrong feather like I did at 95, and you don't realize it until you're done, you can't get those anchor points back. So you have to start all over. So I recommend starting off with a small test sample. And even this one extra step, it, it's still 10 times faster than using the pass tool by adding this one extra step, but it's crucial for the intelligent scissors tool. If you wanna continue elevating your GIMP skills, check out this playlist right here because there's many more ways to remove backgrounds and GIMP. And I have an entire playlist right here with numerous ways showing how to remove backgrounds and GIMP.